so sorry. What is going on with uh, YouTube Live and just trying to get uh, to upload a thumbnail? Because I'll tell you something, it's really, really picky about taking a photograph, uploading a photograph as a thumbnail. Sometimes it'll do it. Most of the time, it just gives you a, a blank screen and um, says nothing, and it's really annoying because I'll actually take the time to make a thumbnail. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm here. I was just having thumbnail problems and also um, getting uh, uh, getting the screen to work in landscape. But I'm here. I haven't done... Hi. Hi, nieces and nephews. Hello. I haven't done a live video in a little while. I've, I've been in Orlando, Florida, as many of you probably know. Um, dodging crazy people um, and uh, enduring uh, lunacy. Um, but I remain uh, your humble ink and superhero merchant. And um, I'm here to draw with you tonight and answer any questions that you have. Now, some of you, uh, yeah, some of you are wondering what's up with Dan Slot. And uh, let me explain this because this is not something that. Um, oh, okay, great. The Gotham City Pizza video. I'm really glad. Um, some of you uh, are asking questions as though Dan Slott uh, kind of uh, quit on us or, or didn't fulfill his, uh, his promise. Uh, yeah, and it's not true. I mean, Dan Slott has been very excited about this. Uh, very excited about it. Uh, he he's not expecting um, anything. Uh, what is this? Hunter is texting me right now. He's talking about uh, he just got the the new uh, Call of Duty or whatever it is. Uh, Twitter, please stop verifying Nazis. All right. So I just went into my uh, I just went into my uh, Twitter. Uh, mail folder to look up these uh, co this conversation I've had with Dan Slot, and uh, his name has changed from Dan Slot to Dan in parentheses Twitter. Please stop verifying Nazis. Un parentheses Slot. Uh, so he is uh, on the Nazi kick, um, uh, which is um, fine. It's just about eighty years too late. All right. So anyway, uh, I said to Dan Slot, "Look, we're going to." Um, do a live stream in which we're going to discuss whichever comic book you want to do, um, and uh, we'll 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 talk about it. And he specifically said to me, uh, you know, Ethan, I want to uh, talk about Silver Surfer uh, number twelve. He said, for some time that was going to be our last issue, which makes it a tricky one because on some level it had to serve as a series finale, even though we knew the real series finale might be number 14. So Silver Surfer was going to get canceled uh, with issue number 12, um, but they were they were under the impression that it might go until 14. Um, and uh, that's the thing. So he's interested in coming on and talking to you guys, doing a commentary, uh, he volunteered that we do this on Sunday at 10 p.m. Of course, I was in Orlando with all of my iPads and uh, my phone, um, which I thought would do the trick. T and Comics, thank you for the super chat. Very kind of you. I have good vibes. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so anyway, I, I, I was all he's like, can we test it out? Dan's concern was he didn't want to do some kind of like Google chat because he was afraid that his email, his Gmail might be visible and uh, he would get stalked. And uh, that was a concern of his. I said, no, that's not going to be a problem. We are going to do um, this on uh, YouTube. And uh, <laughs> he uh, was relieved about that, but I was unable to, to make it happen. Uh, it turns out that I need my laptop to do that kind of event. I didn't have my laptop and it was extremely embarrassing. Um, I told him, I said, listen, I'm home Wednesday. I hope you'll find time for this. People are excited. And he said, no worries, we'll work something out. And I said, thanks, I'm taking full blame for this and assigning you hero status on Twitter. 
and he said, day before we do this, I'll be better prepared. I'm going to put up the actual plot that Mike drew from in its entirety online via Twit Longer. Um, and I told him that was a great idea. And he said, cool, we'll set up a time next week once I see how my schedule shakes out. Now today, even though we didn't officially um, come up with a, a scheduled time to do this today, I think he uh, kind of inferred that I wanted to get it done today because today uh, is the first day that, or, or yesterday, I'm sorry, Wednesday was the first day that I was home from vacation. And he said, Ethan, I hate to be an ass, but this time it's on me. And he couldn't do it. He had a deadline. Um, and he, you know, was unable to, but it's, it is still important to him. Oh, our, uh, wow. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about these metal cards. Uh, since, uh, I got a super chat from a fellow named ARQ JRP. And he said, what is the size of the card and how can I get, okay. So this is basically the size of a trading card. It's a baseball card. And, um, I have several of them and I'm going to be doing sketches on them. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. I just thought it would be kind of fun to do. Um, are you guys excited? No, they're not made of metal. Yeah. Are you guys excited about the Dan Slot su uh, Super Chat? Kind of. It's not a Super Chat. What is it? I keep calling it a Super Chat because that's what I keep hearing. Uh, live chat? Live stream? Are you excited? Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, I'm pretty sure I know how to do it now. Uh, I just need to um, actually use uh, my laptop instead of uh, instead of my iPad, but I think I can do it. <laughs> yeah, people are shocked about it. I mean, people are saying, why, you know, why are you having Dan Slot on? Um, why? Because, okay, for a couple of reasons. Doctor, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Looking forward to hearing Dan actually talk. This is what the doctor says. Looking forward to hearing Dan actually talk comics for a while. As long as he stays off his soapbox, it'll probably be very informative. Well, the other thing I said to him, um, uh, Christian Benson asks, Ethan, how are you after your trip? Christian, I'm, listen, I am zen, okay? I am very, very good. Uh, they can't rattle my nerves. I'm just fine. But the other thing I said to Dan... Um, was uh, this was Sunday and I, I you know th there was a big shooting I didn't even know about it because I you know wow nostalgia and criticism thank you for the super chat thank you for everything you're doing for the community he says more people need to send good vibes and keep promoting comics the industry needs more people like you hope you got my email waiting for oh yeah yeah I, listen nostalgia and criticism I, I went to the post office today and I mailed a bunch of things. Um, I'm behind on my mailings, but I have everybody all set up. I will um, mail your artwork out to you um, probably tomorrow. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I actually said to uh, Dan, you know, Dan, there was a shooting on Sunday in Texas, like a really bad shooting. And um, I think some, some people were concerned that Dan wanted to get on his soapbox and do some kind of like gun control rant um, at me, uh, about that, like, like, he would take the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to try to argue about gun control or, uh, uh, the Second Amendment or something like that with me, you guys have to understand, you need to have faith in me, I, like, if it comes to that, like, if, if, if he wants to argue politics, like, something like gun control with me, uh, listen, uh, I'm ready to go to the mattresses on that. I, I can, you, know, you don't have to worry about that. I can, I can pretty much, uh, uh, deal with him in any kind of debate. Um, but I said to him, I just said, you know, look, is this what you're interested in? Are you interested in, uh, you know, doing politics here? You want to talk about gun control? And, um, he actually said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I was like, that's probably for the best. Um, and uh, yeah, he said, I don't want to do that. I, I think that would be counter um, to the purpose of this live stream. And I do agree. Um, oh, Azriel, thank you for the huge super chat. Um, it breaks my heart when good books get canceled. I like Silver Surfer. Well, here's what I think about it. I think, first of all, uh, you know, Mike Allred is a fantastic artist. And... Um, 
Yeah, on something like Silver Surfer, uh, he's probably great. I, I confess I haven't read any of it. I'm going to be reading and getting caught up um, uh, digitally. I will um, download all these uh, issues, and I'll, I'll know uh, I'll know what to do about it. I'll know what to talk about, you know, when it's time. <laughs> Not much. Of, well, listen, you know nothing, John Snowden. Um, yeah, I'm trying to answer questions and, and get people caught up on what's going on. Um, Edwin Boyette asks, you and Mr. Slot on a mattress sounds like it would be an effective abstinence PSA video. Uh, ugh, yeah, I dare say. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Um, that's not what I meant. I meant I'm ready to go to war. Um, Ethan, how do you feel about Bendis coming to DC? Uh, you want to be honest about it? I mean, I don't, I don't care. Um, uh, the, you know, here's the thing. I think it's going, like, personally, I don't care. Uh, I think it's going to be good for DC. I think it's terrible for Marvel. Um, I really do feel, and I, I don't, you know, I haven't been reading a lot of Marvel books, so I don't know, but I really am under the impression that Bendis is the heart and soul, like the, the spinal column of uh, of uh, Marvel Comics, and um, losing him is devastating. It's absolutely devastating. Um, I, If I were DC, I would be prepared for uh, Marvel to retaliate by stealing one of our writers, um, I don't know who would go, frankly. I don't know who would go. Uh, here's a super chat from Greg Estabrooks. Thank you. Please ask Dan about how much work goes into planning out huge events like Spider-Verse and all the crossovers. Greg, I will if you want me to, but honestly, you guys are going to be able to ask him whatever you want. And as long as you're polite, he'll, he'll, probably, uh, he'll probably answer your questions. Um, he's, you know, I think he, the, I think the thing about Dan is that, uh, he actually is interested in engage in engaging with you guys. I'm under the impression that one thing he really does want to talk about is his own work in great detail. And most people do. I, I didn't think that I would want to talk about my own work, uh, until I started doing it. And I, I rather enjoy looking back on it and, um, telling you guys little, little things about it. Um, what, okay, so people are asking what time the super chat is happening, super chat in quotes, although feel free to donate, that'd be great, I would love to make money off a of dance lot, um, uh, I don't know, I really don't know, it's up to him, but I think it's going to be this week, uh, he has not committed to uh, a particular time, and I have not pressed him to do so, um, so, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I mean, if you um, if you guys uh, follow me on Twitter, and I think most of you do, uh, you will know everything. You'll know everything that's going on. You'll know when it's going to happen. I'll tell you the day before, probably. You know, I'm like that. I, I, I fill you guys in. <laughs> Are you selling tickets to the event? No, this is free for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a comic book otherwise yes my hands would be gigantic like imagine that but no it's a it's a little trading card yeah that's my quote for this chat i would love to make money off a of dance slot <laughs> i told that to billy tucci you know when i was doing his uh commentary i said you know i'm making money off of you and i'll even tell you how much i've made off of billy tucci's chat it's not very much you guys would be uh if you're not already youtubers uh you know i don't know if you're interested how much did i make from someone else talking for me um oh here we go well i've made um three dollars and 46 cents hey that's like uh no, three dollars. Listen, nostalgia and criticism don't undersell me. I made three dollars and forty six cents. I didn't make two dollars and seventeen cents. Um, that's very good. Yeah, I mean that is almost a whole comic book. 
I think it actually is a whole comic book, really. Um, you know, I think a comic book, at least at DC, is two dollars and ninety nine cents. Speaking of which, let's let's test that theory. Oh yeah, here's next week's Justice League that you guys don't have yet, and I do. Um, it is two dollars and ninety nine cents. How do you like that? Isn't it great? So, I mean, at this moment, I could put together all four covers. And, uh, yeah, and I, I have the whole image. You know, um, comic historian Edwin Boyette, thank you. See, I'm good with the super chats. I answer you right away. Edwin Boyette says, first contribution to the EVS gym membership fund. Middle age catches up to us all. Time to take the iron pill. Well, Edwin, yeah. <laughs> I would love to go to the gym. I would love to. But if I went to the gym every day like I used to, I would be drawing a lot fewer comics. You know, that's the thing. Um, Razmas says, Ethan, have you ever tried paying a restaurant bill with a signed sketch? No, but that's a good question because I uh, actually used the men's room at the mall where I did that signing. There's a video like, that I did a little signing in this mall in Okoe, Florida. I had to use the men's room, and I don't know what it was, but there was no men's room in the food court. Uh, there was no men's room. So I went into this restaurant, and I was recognized by someone who, I guess, had a customer who came to see me. He's like, you're the dude who's drawn. He's like, your art is off the hook. I said, thanks, but I have to pee. And he said, oh, you want to use our men's room? I was like, yeah, can I? Is it a problem? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, dude, come on. So he's like, all right, go ahead. And so I came out of there after using his men's room, and he said, we draw me a quick Batman sketch on this placemat? And I was like, are you kidding? All right. So, oh, thank you, Paul Dozier. Put this in the diaper fund. Thank you for the super chat. So I did. I drew a Batman sketch on a placemat at this restaurant for the privilege of peeing in the men's room. And that is uh, superstardom, as far as I can, uh, as far as I, I can tell you. Yeah. People are weird. Yeah, at least he let me pee first. I think he realized that um, trying to get me to draw something while I was uh, in that state probably would not be as good. I would at least rush it. You could assume that. You know, when you go to conventions and uh, you ask... Uh, uh, someone um, to do a commission for you, you should ask them, have you peed? Do you have to pee? You can go ahead and do that right now before you start. All right, let's see. What are you guys talking about? Uh, what's your opinion on cross-gen comics? Uh, I thought they were uh, terrible. I mean, look, the thing about cross-gen comics was somebody had a lot of money, and so he basically spent it um hiring away big talent from, i mean including like george perez and he i think he discovered steve mcniven and yeah he had all this big talent and then he didn't like he was like yeah but you have to draw my ideas so instead of having george perez draw like a superhero team book he had him drawn a pirate book you know they like triple shipped books and uh they were all they were these gorgeous looking books that nobody wanted to read and um you know what can i tell you <laughs> i don't know if anyone even here i mean i assume this crowd is kind of young i don't know if many people remember uh cross-gen comics uh matt west says evs your uh hal jordan was sold out out at my comic store that's great i did a signing yesterday and uh sold a lot of copies of it a lot it was terrific yeah to be young again all right you guys are in your 30s evs can you talk about your relationship working and professional with darwin cook he seemed fairly conservative in his views or at least a political in his work well I, you know here's the thing about darwin i'll tell you um first of all darwin and by the way you see how the camera's shaking like that that's because my phone is taped to my lamp. And so when I touch it, it, it kind of shakes. So excuse that. 
uh, Darwin Cook was a man's man. I mean, he was so cool. He was just so cool. He was so funny, and uh, he just wanted to give you a big hug. He did not like the powers that be anywhere. He hated being told what to do. Um, he wanted to do what he was going to do. And I would say to him, I'd say, Darwin, like, uh, you know, why don't you do a follow up to um, your uh, shoot? I hate when I do this, this talk off the top of my head because I lose uh, titles. New Frontier. Why don't you do a follow up to New Frontier, DC Comics in the 1970s and do the era of Watergate and see what that might be? And he was kind of like, yeah, eh. Uh, I'd rather do this noir book with Dark Horse. And I'd be like, what? Uh, that was just the way he was. I mean, he, he wanted to do his own thing. He didn't give... He didn't really care about like superheroes so much as he cared about autonomy and personal freedom. Um, politically, uh, people always would say when he was around, he'd say, hey, he's one of us. And uh, meaning, you know, one of what I am, uh, which is a very moderate Republican. And he would kind of wink at me. So, I, you know, it's like I, I, he would kind of, he didn't like far leftists, but he would never really uh, confirm anything. And plus he was Canadian. So you could never really tell if Darwin was kind of putting you on, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was nice. He was a really, really good guy. I remember he said to me, like, he saw my tattoos. Last time I saw him, he uh, bought me a beer. We were in Orlando at a Megacon. Was that the last time? Second to last time. He said, what are you, a Chippendale dancer? I was like, what? <laughs> he was just, he was funny. He was just a funny guy. And uh, I was shocked that he uh, left us so soon. Absolutely shocked. Yeah. He, I mean, just what a great, I mean, great guy. I could, I could list about a hundred people <laughs> in comics. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll miss him. I really will. I think that's, uh, Canada is not real, says Mark Santos. Yeah, uh, he, uh, he was great. And I have, um, I think my little brother Noah met him early on before he was really an established professional and was in awe of him and Darwin was very kind to him. Gave him a nice sketch of Supergirl. Um, let's see. Uh, speaking of far leftists, they are starting rumors that Ethan's fans are the one who broke pizza parlor windows. SJW's project, folks. <sighs> well, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, I... Uh, you, you can't even dignify that nonsense. Uh, you know. The truth of the matter is, is that we don't know. We don't know who did it. Um, it it's, uh, but, but what it comes down to is, were it not for um, the ridiculous, hostile, um, intimidating, and, and terrifying... I mean, I didn't even show you guys half of the threats that I, I got from that one individual... Um, who was telling me he's going to go to Gotham because I don't want to worry my family. It's like I don't even want them to see how bad some of them were. And, uh, you know, if it weren't for that and if it weren't for those threats, I, we would all just assume immediately that it was vandalism for the sake of burglary. Um, but the fact is, uh, you, can't, you can't just uh, assume that because uh, there, is, uh, there are crazy people in this world who want to hurt people for their politics. And listen, folks, we have two major political parties in this country. Everyone kind of associates with one of them. Uh, I think you need to relax. Someone's a Democrat or a Republican, big deal. Um, Edwin Boyette, thank you for another super chat. Without being overly political, I wonder how much pressure there is to display the right set of beliefs at Marvel. How soon till a dissenter can't work? Uh... Uh, I don't know. Um, here's the thing: there are, there have been individuals working at the big two who who do kind of uh, um, 
are kind of prejudiced about politics. And they're just editors, so it's like they choose who they're going to hire based on who they kind of like, and that's you know, listen, it's it's arbitrary. Editors can hire for any reason or not hire for any reason. It's you know they're the ones who are keeping the trains running. So uh, it's okay if they if they in a way you know it's okay if they don't want to hire you just because of your politics. I don't know if there's a company wide mandate like that. Here's the fact. The fact is, if I came to Marvel Comics, despite the fact that I would be one of, well, I gotta be honest with you, they don't know how many Republicans they have working for them. They have a lot, and they don't even know. Um, But I would be one of the only out and kind of uh, public Republicans. So um, I'd make them a lot of money. And you'd have to be stupid not to hire me. Stupid. Don't care about business. Brian Dunkel, thank you for that super chat. It's very generous of you. Yeah. I think we're... All right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, everybody just kind of... I think most of the people that are here seem to kind of be the same way. I think there was a lot of... um, uh, There was a lot of just extremism and fear... uh, after last year's election. And I, I, I hope everyone's kind of becoming rational again. Um, and I, I do feel like it's not, you know, it's not based on anything real. It's just based on just bad feelings about who is running the country. Everyone does need a hug. I'm here to give it to them. I'm here to give it to them. I mean, there's 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 nobody that you know I couldn't get along with. I said it before. I'll say it again. There, I don't have haters. I have people who don't know me very well, and uh, I think if they did know me, we would get along fine. Uh, on a different note, what is your opinion or relationship with Jonathan Hickman? I have no opinion and no relationship with him. I've actually never read any of his books, and I've never met him. Uh, I assume that's because he's a Marvel guy, and so we would hang out in different circles. I mean, and furthermore, I, I don't really hang out with a lot of comics pros. I don't. Like, I have I have good acquaintances. I have, like, maybe uh, 10, 15, like, people that I would actually call friends uh, in comics. Most of my friends are just civilians. <laughs> Should I have used metallic ink? That's a good idea. So I don't know Jonathan Hickman. I, I would be interested in reading his stuff. I understand he wrote a great Fantastic Four run. Fantastic Four is my favorite, so I would like to uh, read something about him. Uh, what do you think of Liam Sharp's work? Well, I absolutely love it, and he is very impressive um, uh, in the way how quickly he works and how much he's able to get down on the page. Doc Jabberwock, have you ever met Alex Ross? Yes, I have, and I have a great story about him that I cannot tell you. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Number Six, thank you for the super chat. Enjoyed meeting you at the con and Gotham City Pizza. Uh, m- thank you, Mr. Number Six. What's your name? Let's see. Yeah. I gotta get caught up here. Uh, someone said Liam's Hawkman found number one cover. I, I don't know if I've seen it yet, but listen, he's perfect for that book. Perfect. Why can't I tell the Alex Ross story? Because it's embarrassing to him. That's why. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not like, oh my God, if you guys knew it, you'd be... It's just, you know, just not really... <laughs> it's 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 funny, you know. <laughs> John here. I don't know if he's a hardcore liberal or not. Don't know anything about his politics. I think he's a fantastic artist and um, a gentleman. And he's always been very kind to me. I, I haven't seen him in a few years, but he he was always very kind. Uh, even when he was selling his artwork for enormous sums of money, clearly he's very wealthy. 
Um, he, he still remembered my name and, you know, was, was good to me. And that's all. I mean, you know, I appreciate things like that. I remember people. We're, we're talking about Alex Ross. Hmm. By the way, what is this? 85% of, okay, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> uh, yeah, his paintings are top notch. Here's a common question that people um, ask me. Uh, did you design Dawnbreaker? And no, I did not. Um, Dawnbreaker was designed, I believe, okay, here's how it worked. So Jim Lee originally drew these real quick kind of sketches and, um, uh, and then they were handed off to Greg Capullo and I think Greg Capullo refined them. And then those were sent off to the guy who did these kind of painted, I don't know who, what his name is, this guy. And anyway, that, that version of the character, that painted, digitally painted piece was sent to me and that's what I worked off of in a very confused way um, for drawing Dawnbreaker. I, I had nothing to do with his design. And in fact, I think I would have done it much, much, much differently um, if you had told me, hey, uh, Green Lantern, a kid who starts out as Green Lantern and he becomes Batman later after he becomes this murderer. My God, I mean, I don't know what all the, you know, steampunk stuff is. I don't want why is that there? It has nothing to do with Batman or Green Lantern. Um, but, you know, I guess that it's like heavy metal. So they have this kind of unique uh, look about all of the characters. It's very kind of judge death, you know. And it's fine. I mean, it's immensely popular. So they did it right. What do I know? Hmm. <clears throat> Well, I mean, what would my design be for Dawnbreaker? It would be, it'd be very simple. I mean, it would be a lot like uh, a mashup of Batman and Green Lantern, um, but a little bit darker, a little bit more spooky. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it would be like, it, it wouldn't be so different that me live drawing it for you, you'd be like, wow, that's a great idea. I think, um, you know, it would probably be, end up being less creative and more derivative of things that you've seen before had I drawn it. And that is my whole thing at DC anyway. You know, I, I th th this is kind of um, nostalgia and criticism. Thank you for the super chat. Hope to uh, meet you one day and grab a beer. Me too. Um, I'm a big fan of beer. Ethan, do you wish we would get back to the days of not talking politics, money, or religion in polite society? Yeah, well, it has its place. It has its place. It's just uh, not, not in comics. Oh, Ava's sick up there, and she's crying. I think I'm going to give Andrea a break, and I'm going to go take care of Ava. Which means I'll have to cut this short... <laughs> Andrew's been, I mean, because Ava's been sick since she got back from uh, Orlando. So I'm going to go do that. You guys, thank you so much for the super chats. Thanks for joining me. Um, I might hop back on later tonight. Okay. Love you all. Bye-bye.